Imagine one day while heading to school, you end up finding a paint book titled The Dragon Plate Skirt Note. You pick it up and later realize if you write anyone's name on it, you'll be able to do anything you want to them, including attacking what's behind the dragon's skirt. Unfortunately, there's a catch to this book. It will only work and activate if you get a glimpse of your target's dragon undies, then write their name down afterwards, allowing you to fully unlock the powers of the book. So the question is, what will you guys do if you stumbled upon this power? Well, let me tell you what this guy would do because this boy is the ultimate supreme sussy baka in all of anime. This dude is like the reincarnation of Light Yagami, however, he looks more like L and let's just say he's going to speedrun transforming from L to W real quick. Anyways, this boy's name is Yowook and he's never experienced action before in his life and the closest action he's experienced is playing Street Fighter. So he's a pretty lonely and frustrated guy, but one day, he finally gained a friend from the opposite gender since he keeps passing by this one girl near his house at night. She loves spending time at the swings, so one day while bored, she called him over to talk and ever since then, they've been good friends. Regardless, things are about to change quickly as Yowook is able to get a glimpse at her precious dragon skirt after falling from her swimming way too high. And instead of helping her get back up on her feet, he freezes and stares as he knows his time has finally come to unleash his own dragon sword to vanquish his first ever dragon. But then he hesitates, since he knows he could write her name down in the Living Wild book. But what if the book is just a prank, bro? As he continues staring like a hawk, his heart starts to beat rapidly as he doesn't know what he should do. Eventually, he starts shaking after realizing he only has 30 minutes to write her name down. So he tells his only friend that he has an essay due in 30 minutes. As such, like a true bro, she asks for her drink back as she urges him to go finish his essay instead of wasting time with her. He then vanishes with the wind when the girl named Yura asks him if he wants to drink some more with her. But he apologizes saying he just has to do something real quick and he will be back. Our boy then runs home quickly, almost running as fast as I do and I really need to go to the bathroom. Upon arriving at his house, he does an impressive leap to jump his flight of stairs and barges straight into his room only to stare at the legendary book before him. He then picks up the book and starts feeling some sense of embarrassment, as he can't believe he's actually going to try out if this crazy book actually works. Nevertheless, he whips the book open with such confidence and pen ready to go, so he takes a deep breath and starts thinking of his friend. And so he pauses for a moment, but we all know the look has already gone past the point of no return due to him already blushing with no one nearby. So like a true beta male, he scribbles her name inside the book and proceeds to write down exactly what he wants to happen to her. After writing down that he wants to deploy his siege battering ram to attack the walls of Yura directly at the nearby playground, he gets up and slams his desk as he tries to convince himself that this is all totally okay since she's a girl. Shortly after, he leaves his house with no dignity as he tries to convince himself that he is no loser that would attempt to use otherworldly powers to help him win girls over. Suddenly, while heading back out to the playground to meet up with Yura again, he notices some old geezer aggressively posturing himself in front of a random woman. Of course, instead of helping the poor woman out, he decides to activate his sneak level from Skyrim as our boy is just a soy boy. We then discover that the woman is actually not just any random woman, but she's actually Ummi, the neighbor of a goddess that is super kind and helpful to everyone. Yowa then eavesdrop on them, learning the fact that she actually has a husband, yet this weirdo named Jong Hoon is acting like some kind of aggressive beta orbiter. As our boy continues to watch in darkness, it's further revealed that Yeonmi is literally Dr. Disrespect as she two-timed her husband with ugly Jong Hoon, although she claims it was all a mistake. Nonetheless, the turntables turn even more with Jong Hoon continuing to do a display not allowed to be shown. So let's just say he's a mega sussy baka. But since Jowook has a small crush on the neighborhood goddess, he musters up the courage to defend her, so he ends up going back inside his house. After reaching his front door, he opens it, and then slams it closed super loudly so Jong Hoon would hear someone's about to come. He then continues down another flight of stairs by stomping as loud as he could, just to make sure he can alert Jong Hoon that a Chad is about to appear. In the end, it actually works as Jo Wook is able to find Ummi all alone without the man pestering her again. The two then exchange some formalities, but it's unfortunate that Yummi looks a little bit flustered after her encounter with Jong Hoon. Regardless, Jawook was able to perfectly execute his plan, although I did expect him to bring out a baseball bat instead, but I guess using his big brain works as well. With his duty now accomplished, he hurries back to the playground, busy wondering to himself if the dragon plate skirt note will really work. Upon getting close to the destined playground, Yura seems to look like she's getting rocked by an earthquake, with a magnitude of 69, as you can see her tremble from miles away. However, as he steps onto the playground itself, Yawook is unable to locate Yura, causing him to feel some regret after running all the way to his house and back hoping he could actually score. 
He then smacks his head and begins to laugh at himself for actually thinking that some random book he found would give him the power to become a Chad, without being a real Chad himself. And so he heads home feeling defeated. Although he does attempt to hype himself back up by claiming that he at least got some exercise out of the entire ordeal. Meanwhile, it's revealed that Yura is actually busy walking around the block presumably back home, due to her feeling some super weird sensations she could not control while she was on the playground. As such, she had to leave the area and helped her get back to feeling like her normal self. But she feels embarrassed about the whole thing as she can't believe she, her mind was overrun by the thought of Yowook. On the other hand, Yowook finds himself still feeling dejected as he truly hoped the book was real, so he flops down on his bed and proceeds to go over the rules of the book. His mouth then opens upon discovering the fifth rule of the book, containing the fact that the effect of the book will wear off if he does not find his target in exactly 10 minutes. And so, our boy is jolted back to his feet as he can't believe he missed out on some fine print. Realizing that he missed out on 10 minutes as he was distracted by Eunmi and Jonghu before he got to the playground. With the advent of the important caveat he missed out on, our boy decides he needs to try it out again while strictly following all the rules to make sure this book actually does not work. He's actually that down bad like Jong Hoon, so he decides it's time for round two, baby. And so this menace catches me off guard as well, due to him deciding he's going to go downtown to look for the most beautiful girls around. Now his plan is literally legendary as it's all centered around him closely following behind, praying to the wind that a lucky gust of wind will come his way and lift up the dragon's skirts. So take notes guys as this dude literally contains the best genius I have ever encountered in my life, so long may he be successful. Anyways, this menace did not realize it wasn't even a windy day to begin with, so in the end he spent his entire day failing his mission, hoping that some kind of wind would come out of nowhere. So I guess there's no such thing as a weather application or weatherman in this world, or maybe our boy is just too focused on thinking outside the box. Regardless, with our boy wasting his entire day, he decides to head home, but then he gets graced by a 10 out of 10 appearing out of nowhere going up a flight of stairs. It was at this moment he clenched the hardest, begging as loud as he can in his head, just for the gods to give him just one chance to take advantage of. Unfortunately, the girl was well versed in the art of protecting the dragon undies when walking upstairs, as she blocks the view with her own hand instinctively. And then it happens again and over and over, so our boy begins to lose his mind, unable to believe that girls are very well trained at such a thing. Nonetheless, as Yuwook continues his journey back home to being a lonely boy, he becomes self-aware and realizes that he's turned into the man he despises the most, the legendary pervy sage. Upon arriving back home at the compound he lives in, he tells himself that it's maybe time for him to stop cosplaying as his most hated shinobi. However, Yumi comes out of nowhere to greet him and calls for his name while holding some groceries. He then opens the door for her like a true gentleman and even allows her to go first, but let's just say our boy knows exactly what he is doing. As he shadows her from behind like a ninja, he uses some math he learns from school to triangulate the perfect spot for him to stand at to see if he can formulate some dragon undies. In the end, his calculations were correct, allowing him to witness some greatness, as it was time for the boy to actually win at life for the first time. And so he quickly hurries by Emmy to say goodbye, telling her to have a great day but excuses himself claiming he needs to do an essay real quick. With his heart thumping and beating faster than ever, he swiftly drops his backpack and whips out the pink book of destiny. After placing the book and opening it on his desk, he readies his hand to write down Miss Emmy on it, but he freezes and stalls. He then starts trembling as inner conflict rises up, due to his hand trying to write down her name but his brain is trying to stop it from moving. In the end, his body overcomes his brain so he ends up writing down a paragraph describing exactly what he wants to do. Upon finishing, he instantly stands back up and reassures himself that he's only doing this to make sure the notebook actually works.